We got parts, baby. Let's go. I think it took like three weeks or so, but I got half my order in. We got a little box here full of some goodies that I can finally do something with. I don't know why iRace does this, like it's so random, but they always put a bag of candy in their orders. I think I said it in my first video with the, when I put coils on my STI. I, they had a bag of candy in that box too. That's where I got my coils from. It is honestly hilarious. I think it's so funny. Yeah, iRace Autosports guys, they're hooking me up on the Subaru build, giving me some pretty good deals on parts and stuff like that. So check them out. So what do we got in the box? Fuel pump. Boost control solenoid. Head studs, let's go. And last but not least, if I can get it out of the box. Killer B oil pickup. That's the only thing you guys are here for, so let's do that one. I already had this open, but I retaped it just for the effect. I didn't actually take it out though, so I haven't seen it. This is my first reaction. Holy packing nuts. What the, oh, I can get the window straight without making a mess. There she is, baby. Damn, look at that penetration. Oh, I'm gonna make a mess, so fuck it. Woo! What the plastic baggie is going on here? I guess you can't get any. Ooh, that's an O-ring I see. Okay, I'm gonna open this with two hands and then show you guys. Before I open that though, there's probably more stuff in here. Instructions, cool. Oh, is that a sticker? Is that a sticker? That's a sticker. I lied, these aren't instructions. It's just like a product show off pamphlet kinda, which is a good thing because I need that and I need that. She's out of the bag now. Here's the windows tray. And here is the pickup. And it should come with an O-ring that sits right up top there. And be careful not to damage that because if you damage that, you'll probably not get oil pressure when you start your car. I don't think, I don't think anybody wants that. Probably, no. I'm doing this with the engine out of the car. Doesn't make a difference on, for video purposes because if you're doing it on the car, you're just gonna be laying on the ground and that sucks for you. It's actually not that bad. I'll put a link maybe down below to the pickup and baffle on iRace, the site that I use to get my parts. I don't know if I'll link the kind of silicone I use, but there is the three bond gray silicone that you use for the cam plates and stuff like that on Subarus, but I'm just gonna be using, I work at Toyota. We have a black silicone, any black RTV should work for the oil pan on the bottom. First thing, 17 mil and a ratchet or just a 17 mil wrench. Get the drain plug off there, drain the oil out of it. I still actually don't have the oil out of it. Holy smokes, I think I'm gonna be going down to uh, 3000K oil changes on the Subi. This looks like a diesel. I'm gonna sauce this drain plug back in there just so I don't make a mess for the meantime. All right, I actually just took the turbo off right here. Little spoolie boy here that's real broken. Listen to that shaft play. Yeah, she's clapped. So I took that off just so I could flip the engine all the way over because it hits the stand at the back. So let's flip her over right now. Well, I got halfway through rotating the engine and then my the coolant hose on the other side hit. I thought I could get away with it, but I didn't have enough clearance. As you can see here, that sticks out and it hits here. So I wanted to rotate the other way, but my up pipe hits. That's why I took the turbo off. And then I, don't know, I tried it with the other way, whatever. Now I gotta take the headers off. So I'm gonna take the headers and the up pipe off. The headers do not interfere at all with any of the oil pan bolts. They go all the way around there. They're all super accessible. I don't know if you can see that, the lighting's super shitty. But I'm gonna get the headers off and then we'll start from there. So I got the headers off. Again, you don't have to take the headers off to do this. I'm just doing it so I can rotate the engine. Let's finish getting the engine rotated upside down so I can work on the oil pan easier. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a mess. 
I was so not prepared for this. Well, I got the engine flipped. Um, made an absolute mess in the process. But I put a whole bunch of floor dry on the ground. That'll dry up in a bit. I'll clean it up later. I'm too lazy right now. On the oil pan, you're gonna have a whole bunch of 10 mil bolts, whether you're under the car or you're above it like me. I don't know what you guys are doing, but take off all those 10 mil bolts first. So let's get to that. Okay, so to get the oil pan separated from the block, I actually have two little tools here that are tapered and flat on one, um, flat on one side. You could use anything as simple as a flathead screwdriver. Just be very, very careful not to angle it down and not to damage or etch the surface on the block and not to bend the oil pan. Just like that, she is off. When you take it off, make sure you're always applying an even amount of pressure all the way around. You're not just bending one end super heavy to bend the pan and mark up your sealing surface here. It's silicone. It's not gonna be that big of a deal because you're gonna seal it anyways if you scratch the block a little bit, but be careful. Obviously don't try and absolutely kill it. Once you have the oil pan off, make sure you double check your uh, dipstick O-rings because mine are absolutely clapped. So I'm gonna have to head over to Subaru, probably tomorrow, and I'm gonna grab some new dipstick tube O-rings. Any time that you buy seals for an engine, gaskets for an engine, this might just be my opinion, but pay the extra couple bucks, get OEM stuff. I bought a Malhi or Mathly, I don't, I don't know how to say it, gasket kit for my engine when I built my engine and I ended up having my front crank seal leaked, my valve cover gaskets leaked, like, I don't know, spend the extra couple bucks, get the OEM stuff, you know it's quality. And especially on Subarus doing a valve cover, it is absolute hell to do in the car. You're pretty much pulling an engine to do a valve cover on a Subaru, because I hate doing them in the car. Just go with OEM gaskets if you can. Aside from that, I'm actually gonna start before I get the new oil pickup and the new baffle plate in, I am actually going to clean up the old silicone on the block. Just to get the thick stuff off, I'm gonna use a razor blade, get all the big stuff off, and then after I'm done with the razor blade, I'm gonna go over with just a little piece of scratch right and just clean everything up. And I'm gonna lay a rag inside here just to make sure I don't get anything into the engine. Fingers are absolutely killing me right now. I got most of it cleaned up. It's pretty clean for the most part. I still gotta take some brake clean and wipe it down and clean everything up. But now I'm at the point where we are going to take off the oil pickup first and then take the stock baffle plate off. You're gonna have one 10 mil bolt holding the pickup on on this side and then two on this side. Take those off.
One tip, be very, very careful when you're taking bolts off. Don't drop them in the engine because that will not be fun to try and fish them out of there. You'll probably shit your pads as soon as you drop it in there because you could drop it right into the crankcase in there. So when you're taking bolts out, be very, very careful. That's why I was being very careful with silicone. I have some silicone sitting on the sides that I need to, I'm probably gonna get a shot back in here once I take off the baffle plate and just vacuum it out quick. Don't take compressed air and blow it in there because then you're just gonna end up blowing silicone into the crankcase and that is not what you want because Subaru oil passages are so tiny that if you get any silicone clogging there, I've actually seen a lot of customer vehicles at work, like FRSs, stuff like that, that silicone gets stuck in oil passages and you can actually seize bearings because the oil can't flow because the silicone blocks the whole oil passage. So be careful of that. I'm just gonna go around with my vacuum real quick and just suck it all up so I don't get any silicone in there. Like if you see any of that stuff I dropped in there, yeah, you do not want that in there, that is bad. I'm just gonna take brake clean and a nice clean rag. Don't spray brake clean directly in there, spray the brake clean on the rag. Got it all cleaned up. For the most part, I'm gonna clean it again after I get it all together. Putting the baffle plate in, the Killer B logo faces the oil filter side, sets in just like that. Just hand tighten these back two bolts. And then you're gonna wanna take your oil pickup, put a little bit of oil on that O-ring, which I've already done, set her in place. And then you're gonna wanna get your two bolts hand threaded in there and your two bolts hand threaded in there. So your two bolts that don't have the washer on it, over here. Once you get those all hand tightened in, you're gonna wanna tighten down your pickup end first that seats the O-ring, because then you're not tightening this down flat and it's not gonna yank it up and you're not gonna have it not seal here and then have oil pressure issues. Just tighten this side up first. And go ahead and do your two side guys. Now you're gonna take your handy uh, torque wrench here. You're gonna torque the pickup bolts by the O-ring to 7.4 foot-pounds. And then you're going to torque these guys to 4.7 foot-pounds, but mine doesn't go that low, so I'm gonna do five. Next thing I'm gonna do is get the oil pan cleaned up. If you guys bought a new Killer Bee oil pan or something like that, then you can just skip ahead to resealing the pan, but I'm gonna take my factory oil pan and clean up any of the old silicone that was on there. In your thread holes for the bolts, you're gonna have a little bit of silicone in there. Try and get in there with a flathead screwdriver and clean it out unless you have a deburring tool, then use that. But try and clean some of it out. If there's a little bit in there, like that much, I'm not really worried about that. That's not that big of a deal. That's what she looks like now after the wire wheel. Decently clean, but now I'm gonna head on over to the Varsal tank to clean all of the silicone and stuff like that out of the pan.
Oil pan is all cleaned up and ready to go. I cleaned it in the Varsol tank, brake cleaned it, wiped it down, cleaned it with some scotch Brite again. It's good to go. I scotch brighted the block again and brake cleaned out a rag, wiped it down. It's all clean, ready to go. I actually do need to replace my oil dipstick O-rings and on the oil pan, there's an O-ring that goes to one of the oil passages. It gets all hard and crusty over time and you can see mine's all flattened out and absolutely horrible. So I got new ones from Subaru. OEM parts. I'll put the part numbers for the oil dipstick O-rings and the oil pan O-ring that you need in the description down below just so that you guys have the OEM part numbers. Now let's get the new O-rings on, seal off the pan and get it back on the engine. Just to show the line that they want you to go with, with the silicone, just go in a big circle around it. As long as you're on the inside of the bolts, going in a path like this, and then on the inside of the bolts, you should be all good. One more thing before you get the oil pan on the engine. You look at your OEM oil pan bolts, there's gonna be a whole bunch of silicone and just absolute grossness on them. Take them to a wire wheel, clean them up. I'll show you up quick before. And after, I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but there's no more silicone on the threads. They're nice and clean. Now you're gonna go around and torque all of the oil pan bolts. The torque from factory is actually 3.7 foot pounds, but I'm gonna be doing five because that's the lowest my torque wrench goes. All right, she's on, finally. And I say finally because this has been a couple of days because I had to go to Subaru and get parts and stuff like that. But honestly, it's not that bad of an install. You could do it in probably like an hour and a half to two hours and that's being generous. It's not that bad. If you guys are actually doing this and starting the car after, get a new drain plug gasket on there, get a new oil filter on there and then fill it with oil, fire it up. As long as your oil pressure light goes out, you are golden. I'm obviously not doing that right now because I gotta take the heads off the engine and I gotta put in ARP head studs. My next video will probably be a guide on how to install head studs, replace your head gaskets, whatever the title will be. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm trying to make these videos as a way to kind of help you guys. I know whenever I'm working on a car, sometimes I hit that point where I'm just like, ah oh, shit, how do I do this? Or what's the torque spec on this? So. Not, a, not everybody has access to all data, for example. It's a program that I have at work where I can print off torque specs, print off silicone paths for oil pans for sealing them and stuff like that. So hopefully this helps you guys. If it does, let me know in the comments down below. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out. I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>